Anytime you're deploying resources to the cloud, one of the primary concerns is always going to be cost. I don't care how much money you have, odds are the cloud can find a way to charge you enough to make it hurt. Trust me, I've seen it. So luckily there is a tool called InfraCost that we can use in our pipeline to check the additional cost that a pull request full of resources could potentially incur. So let's set that up. We're going to set up InfraCost to run a breakdown in a report of our new costs on any pull request. So what I'm going to do is first head to infracost.io. You'll need to set up an account if you don't already, but don't worry, this is free, at least currently. Hopefully they don't change that anytime soon. You'll then need to go to settings, org settings, API tokens, and we're going to create an API token here. Now that will need to be passed in as infracost underscore API underscore key as a secret. And we will get to that here in just a second. So go ahead and copy that. Once you've done that, head back to the repository, head to settings, secrets and variables and actions. And in here you can see I've already got an InfraCost API key set up as an environment secret. Now you don't have a paid account. You may not have access to environment secrets. You may just have normal repository secrets. That's also fine. But if you do use an environment secret, we need to make sure we specify that in the workflow. So go ahead and create that secret within the environment if you can. Just add environment secret, name that, and pass in the token here. But since I've already done that, I'm just going to leave it be. All right, once you have finished that, go ahead and head back to your code space here, and let's create the InfraCost workflow. So new file, infracost.yml, sounds good. And then what we'll do is head to the InfraCost slash actions repository here, which if you scroll down, gives you this nice, gigantic, cluttered boilerplate. Go ahead and copy that. And let's paste that in. We'll walk through it and also clean it up a good bit. So first up, what I'm going to do is name this name. We'll just say run InfraCost. That works. And you can see here, if you use the InfraCost cloud, InfraCost can also push your information to your dashboard with an InfraCost cloud. I'm personally not using it, so I'm going to delete anything that has to do with that. I'm going to keep InfraCost focused on pull requests. So make sure you read this if you'd like, but I'm just going to get rid of these comments to clean that up. I'm going to get rid of the push option as well and keep that only to pull requests. We've got typed open, synchronized, closed. Yeah, that's fine. All right, for the environment, if you're using private modules, you'll need to keep this active. I'm not, so I'm gonna clean that up as well. All right, next, the first job here will run the InfraCost CLI and post it in the PR comments. That's exactly what we want, so that's great. I'm just gonna delete those comments. And then if I scroll down here, we can see We've got more environment stuff here. If we need to access InfraCost Terraform Cloud, or if you're using Spacelift or anything like that, you may need these details. I don't, so I am deleting that. And then down here, if you use private modules, don't need that either. All right, so we are cleaning this up a good bit. So now in the steps, we can see we've got to pass in an API key. So remember, we have this API key set in our production environment. So what I need to do is head back to the jobs here and make sure I pass in that environment. So environment is production, just like that. So now we should have access to that InfraCost API key secret. Now I'm also going to go ahead and delete those comments. We don't need those either. And here is where it's going to check out the base branch, and that's going to run InfraCost on our existing infrastructure to see how much it costs. And it's going to run an InfraCost base.json there. And then what it's going to do is check out the PR branch, which is where our changes are. And that's how we're going to get the difference between what we've deployed and what we're going to deploy. So go ahead and read these comments if you like, but the default is going to work out fine. Post InfraCost comment, notice InfraCost has this awesome little function here that basically abstracts the API and does the posting for you. 
So this is going to post all of the information you'll need to see. All right, after that, run InfraCost on default branch and update InfraCost Cloud. We don't need any of that. So everything else can get deleted. All right, so that is a lot less than what we started with, which is pretty great. So now let's see if it works and hopefully it does. So what I'm going to do first is create a new branch. So git checkout dash B feature. We'll just call it feature. That's fine. All right. Git add, git commit dash M added infra cost, just like that. Git push origin feature. And then all I need to do is open a pull request. So I'm going to do that the easy way with a GitHub CLI, GH PR create dash dash fill. And what that does is just sets the pull request body as the name of the commit. All right, cool. So let's go take a look and see if that's coming through. So I'll head to my pull requests here. We've got the pull request open and an action running. And fingers crossed, as you can see, we've got the infra cost pull request checks here. All right, everything went through, so that is good. Let's go take a look and see if there was a comment made on the pull request. All right, monthly estimate generated. This comment will be updated when the code changes. Well, let's go change some code. So what I'll do is just head right into, and again, if you don't have this code, you can clone it from the repository. I'm gonna head to terraform.tfvars, and I'm just going to change this to a T3 small, which should incur some costs. Let's go ahead and get add, get commit dash M updated instance, get push origin feature. And hopefully we'll get a difference here, but let's see. All right, everything looks like it passed. And as you can see here, we've got a nice little infra cost report. Baseline cost is $8 more. All right, and that compared it versus the previous cost looks like. So that is great. So everything worked well. You can go ahead and merge this pull request if you would like, I would recommend it. Confirm merge. Now that we're using InfraCost to see how much a PR is going to potentially cost us with new infrastructure spend, let's see how we can write policies that will pass or fail our checks based on how much that is. So what we're going to do is use open policy agent, which is here, open source, general purchase policy engine, blah, 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 kind of a uh, lot of words used for just a way to write guardrails for what we are deploying. So if something breaks these guardrails, such as costs too much money, it's going to fail. Now, luckily for us, InfraCost actually has open policy agent built right in, which makes it very easy to see a failed policy or a passing policy. And basically we're going to write this OPA or OPA code, which is written in a policy language called Rego, R-E-G-O. And we'll set a threshold. We'll just say like $10. We're not going to say 5,000. And if our changes exceed this threshold, it's going to fail. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So what I'll do first is I'm going to copy this here right from this page. If it changes, of course, you can grab it from this repository later. And then what I will do is create a new directory and I'm going to call that policies. And in that, I will just create cost.rego. We'll make it easy and paste that in. And like they love to do, there are so many comments. I'm not gonna go through them all. Go ahead and read them if you'd like to further understand what's happening here. But honestly, this makes it impossible to read. So there we go. This is a lot cleaner and easier to read there. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this threshold a lot lower at $10. Now, of course, you can set this as a variable as well. We're not going to waste time doing that in the video, 
but I would recommend it, especially if you're using multiple environments. So now what we need to do is add the ability to analyze that policy to our infra cost workflow. And literally all we have to do is pass in this policy path and the location of the policy. So that makes things a lot easier than you're going to find it is when you're having to do this manually. So go back to my infracost.yml. And what I'm going to do here also is I'm going to remove all this extra space. This is YAML and space kind of scares me sometimes because it's so weird about white space. So I'm just going to clear it up and condense this some. Not necessarily required, but it's just what I like to do sometimes. And then what I'm going to do is right here at the very end, I'm going to add this slash and pass in policy dash path and then dot policies cost dot rego, just like that. All right, so hopefully that's all we have to do. So I've merged the last PR, so I'll need to create a new one. I'm just going to start with git add, git commit dash M added OPA, we'll just do that and git push origin feature and then GH for GitHub PR create dash dash fill. All right, so let's go see how that works out. I'll refresh this. All right, it is running. So hopefully this plays nicely. All right, that's looking pretty good to me. It says policies passed here and nothing has been generated because the code has not changed at all. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna look at some details here. All right, so nothing useful yet. Let's go back and make a change. You could also just send it back through as it is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make this change to t3.large and let's see what happens here. So git add, git commit dash m changed instance type, git push origin feature. All right, and let's see what happens. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Here we go. So this is way above $10, obviously. So the policy has failed. All right, that's exactly what we were looking for. The check has now failed. So if I want to go back and change this to a T3 micro, let's go ahead and see what happens. Change to T3 micro, git push origin feature. All right, I'm going to refresh this page. All checks have passed, policies passed, baseline costs, we're looking at $8, which is perfect. All right. So I can go ahead and merge this pull request. And if you'd like, you can delete that branch to clean things up. Head back in, I'll get checkout main, get pull origin main to sync that up. And then if I want to delete from here, I can just say git branch dash D feature. All right, so that is all for this video. Thanks for watching.